this is the ideal time to do repotting because with spring approaching there's life in the trees and whatever you do to the trees is not going to harm it there are certain times which are best for repotting early spring february march is a very good time in fact, with some of our maples, once you miss the window for repotting, then you've missed it for the year. You catch them just at the right time when the buds are starting to appear. With the evergreens, it's about, about the same, but you can't see the buds as well as you can see with the deciduous trees. So there is a time to do it, and this is the more, uh, best time to do it. Now, many of you don't understand why we repot. There is a common belief that in bonsai, we starve the trees and uh, really distress the trees to keep them dwarf. But that is not the truth. You know, we stimulate the trees to keep them in good health. So repotting, we don't call it root cutting. A lot of people think bonsai involves cutting the roots, but we call it repotting because what we're trying to do is repot the tree to stimulate growth and keep it in better health and give it more vigor. From time to time, you'll have to look at each tree to see if it needs repotting. So there is that thing to consider first. This one, I looked at the other day, and look at the roots there. See? When you see roots like this, then obviously it is time to repot. See, there's no more room for the roots to grow. It has gone round and round, and if you left it like this, it will continue to grow, but it will start going downhill. The health of the tree will suffer. So this is why we repot, to keep the tree in a good, healthy condition. Um, and of course it involves removing some of the old root, making room for the new roots to grow and that is the purpose and process of repotting. So with a tree like this, we have some repotting tools which is like a root hook or we can have one of these rakes and you rake the roots out. Once had a juniper that had roots about five foot long. It hadn't been done for 17 years, but it was still alive. But it was not in good health. So you can see all that can be cut off. I just want to say something about the tools we use for repotting. There are lots of bonsai tools. These are trimming shears with the long handle and the short blade. They are the trimming shears for trimming the shoots. This design of scissors is our repotting or root pruning shears. You can cut the roots with these scissors, but if you're going to use it for trimming, once you start cutting roots and getting into contact with soil, it blunts the blade. So keep the tools separate. If you're using this for trimming the shoots, then don't use it for trimming the roots because it's going to blunt it. Uh, these are good for root pruning because it's got a nice big handle to hold and they're quite sharp anyway. So we keep separate tools for uh, cutting the roots and for trimming the shoots. So once you tease the roots out, like that, you don't need all that. Many people are terrified of cutting the roots because they think it will kill the tree. I remember in the days when I used to do some television in the 80s, some of those presenters used to say to me, you definitely kill the tree. But they didn't understand that this is quite normal to see their end ones. So you cannot kill it because you're just stimulating the tree and making it grow stronger. So the common question is, how do you know when to repot? We repot when it's pot bomb. Also, another rule of thumb um, is that with junipers and pines, we prefer to repot every three to five years. If you do it too often, you get a lot of coarse growth, and when you get coarse growth, the trees will not um, look so convincing as both of So here we are, we've taken that much root off, as you can see. Don't remove all the soil. In some Japanese books, I know that in Japan they have a different climate. I've seen some Japanese growers. They not only tease the roots, but they jet it with a heavy, fierce jet of water and wash every grain of soil off. You can do it. I'm not saying you'll kill the tree, but I prefer not to do it. It can be a bit dangerous. So I think if you remove about an inch 
or two of soil all round, then that should be enough. You should always leave enough root. You see, there's still a lot of root there. Although I removed that much, I still have that much left in the pot. Now I'm going to change the pot because this was growing in a Japanese clay training pot. Because this is like a semi-cascade tree, I'm going to put it in this pot like that. So you see, the pot that you use is quite important because the shape of the pot, the color, um, the style, they all have a bearing on the style of the tree. But because this is not a normal conventional tree that is going upright, we're going to use a deep pot or a tall pot because it's what we call a semi-cascade style of tree. So we're going to put it at this angle. So once we've cut enough root away, we will then put it into this pot. All bonsai pots have a large drainage hole. You see, this is a big drainage hole. And then you will be asking me, what are these small holes for? These small holes will drain, but they're used for tying the tree in. So they, they're called the tying holes, or the tying the tree in when they repot. But it's a good practice. The reason being, if you don't tie the tree in, it can get knocked out of its pot and uh, the wind can knock it or just you can accidentally knock it. So having the wires to tie the tree in will stabilize the tree and keep it better. There's just some clay in that. You can either use one piece of wire or two, it doesn't matter. going to use one piece of wire and the bottom cover that large hole many years ago gardeners even today ordering gardeners they put broken flower pots you know they call crocs at the bottom to stop the soil running away but if you use mesh which is so thin it hardly takes up any space so that is more efficient than crocs and of course it stops the earthworms and other bugs coming in. So that is what we put in there. And now I will show you what compost we use. The pines and junipers like a soil that is more free draining. So they have large granular structure in the soil and uh, they have more sand. We mix our own soils. Now this is a Japanese soil called Akadama. Akadama translated from Japanese simply means red clay soil. Aka is red and Dama is red. So this clay soil is artificially made. They mine a special type of clay in Japan, a red clay. They then roll it into sheets. And when the sheets are rolled, they then crush it and they sieve it and get the right grades. Very expensive soil. We sell it for about 19 pounds a bag. But as you can see, it is clay, but it has that amazing property of being able to drain water and retain moisture at the same time. It almost seems a contradiction, you know, being able to retain water and drain at the same time. So that's why it's so unique. In Japan, for very big trees, they use 100% akadama in their trees. But in this country, because we don't have such a wet climate, we prefer not to use it 100%. We mix it with about four or five different ingredients. This is pine bark, made from pine, chopped up bark, which orchid growers use, sometimes called orchid bark. And this is Levington, it's a trade brand, uh, which is sphagnum moss peat. We use a bit of this. And then we use a type of grit, which the alpine growers use. This is Chichester grit from some Chichester. And then there are also different types of Japanese grit. And when we mix it together, you get this lovely consistency. So we sell this type of soil, and we find that the bonsai grow much better in this. You, as I say, you can grow any soil. Like this is some of the soil that our nursery plants are planted, you know, when we dig up our trees. This is just a compost with fine sand and a bit of bark and a bit of Levington compost. But for bonsai, we prefer a more open, uh, free-draining compost, which is that. Some growers suggest you put a fine or a large grain aggregate, or substrate they call it, 
to improve the drainage. You can do that. You don't have to, but it does help sometimes when you want free draining soil, especially for juniper. So I put a little bit of that, but I say most people don't even bother to do it. You don't have to do it. And then after that, I start putting the bonsai compost there. Here, the height is about right. Now the angle of planting is quite important. You know, you don't plant it like that, or you don't plant it like that. There's a certain angle. Also, with a cascade pot, you can either use this as the front, or can, you can use it as the corner as the front. There are many ways of display. See, you can use a corner like that. So the position in the pot is also quite important. This pot I chose because it suits that tree. The pot is like the clothes people wear. It makes a tremendous difference on the final appearance of the tree. And because bonsai is about beautiful things, beautiful trees, the shape of the pot, the color of the pot, all have an important bearing on the final appearance of the tree. In Japan at this time of year, in fact, at this uh, weekend, I think the 13th, there's a big exhibition in Japan called the Kokofu Exhibition. Um, it is the premier exhibition of bonsai in the world. And in some of those major exhibits of prize-winning trees, they hire the pots. Some of the antique Chinese pots, which are two, three hundred years old, are hired like you hire, you know, uh, morning coats for a wedding. They pay big money just to hire the pot for that occasion. And then after the show, they return the pot to the owner. So it just shows how important the pot is. Did you so, put any fertilizer in that one? No, you shouldn't put fertilizer. I'll tell you why. You asked a very good question. When you tease the roots or cut the roots, you expose the ends of the roots and it burns it. Like when you have a cut in the finger, you put salt or fertilizer, it burns it. It does the same thing to the, the roots. So don't fertilize, don't put fertilizer for at least, I would say, maybe two months. Wait till the tree starts growing again. And when you see signs of growth, then put fertilizer. So I repotted now. I would probably not put fertilizer till about May when the tree has started producing new roots. <laughs> so that's very, very important. Don't put fertilizer in the soil. In fact, our bonsai fertilizer has, our bonsai compost has no fertilizer in it. It's always better to apply the fertilizer <laughs> separately. I've been pushing the soil in with my fingers, but I will just get a little tool. It helps to make sure all the soil goes into the little crevices and that there are no gaps left because you want the roots to be touching all the soil. So you'll be surprised how much more room you can get just by poking in like this. You see, there'll be lots of space introduced. See, it's gone right there. So it's very useful to do things. The smaller the pot, the more important. If it's a big pot, you can just ram it with your hands. But especially with fine trees and small trees, you should do this. See, there's loads of space. Lots of room too. with that you tie the trunk with this bit of wire. Mm -hmm. This is just to stabilize the tree. Once the tree is stabilized you then could take it off after say six months or a year but I don't usually bother. We leave it on until the next time we come to report. Some people scrape a bit of moss to put on top of the tree, but if you just keep watering it, it will grow. So, see it's taken on a new appearance. So that will be okay for the next three, four, or even five years till it's time to repot again.